Okay, hi. So human uh, vision is uh, trichromatic vision. It means that every color that you see is the product of the signals generated by solely three types of uh, photoreceptor cells located on our uh, retina. So basically it limits our vision to, and confines it into a three-dimensional color space. Now imagine that uh, you had a device such as your cell phone that could allow you to extend your vision into a high dimensional color space and think about all the hidden information that this uh, could reveal and uh, how that could affect your daily lives. So one way of doing that is using hyperspectral imaging in which a series of narrow band images of an object are acquired and then composed into what is called a hyperspectral cube. So this cube holds a lot of information of your object and allows you, for example, to do a spectral analysis at each point on the object. So the question is, how do we get these narrow band images? So similar to the uh, fabri perot effect, when light passes through a, a couple of, uh, of surfaces with anti-reflective coatings, it resonates in the gap that is separating these surfaces and uh, goes through interferences which result in a narrow band transmission spectra of such a structure. Now, this transmission spectra uh, could be basically shifted if we simply change the optical gap in this filter. If, for example, we increase the optical gap, then the transmission peak will shift into the infrared range. Now, the first ever implementation of this principle in the MEMS device was made by Melinson in 1987. And today, the state of the art is considered the, the design of Blomberg from VTT, which was developed in 2009. Now, the problem with all these uh, electrostatical uh, tunable fabri filters is that they have a very limited tunable range, which basically limits, limits it to about a third of the initial unactuated uh, gap size. And this is due to the well-known pooling phenomena. So basically, when it, we have a movable mirror and a stationary mirror, and we apply uh, electrostatic actuation, and the optical gap increases. But immediately after about a reduction of a third in the, of the initial optical gap, we bump into this pooling phenomena. And this li inherently limits their tunable range. So because hyperspectral imaging requires a very broad tunable range of a filter, we uh, bypass this pooling phenomena by simply decoupling the optical and the electrostatical gaps. So in our design, we have a movable mirror uh, which has a set of uh, electrodes and another set of electrodes which are exterior to the optical gap. And in this concept, when we apply it to the actuation voltage, the optical gap increases instead of decreasing and since we can design this electrostatical gap to be much, much greater than the optical gap, we can avoid pooling and allow a very large tunable range of the optical gap itself. So in addition, um, since the unactuated gap size can be extremely small, then with certain coatings, uh, this filter becomes essentially transparent. And this is useful in situations where we want to support regular imaging in addition to hyperspectral imaging. So the device was manufactured uh, at a commercial foundry and is uh, shown here on the top right. It has a very uh, small form, form factor. The, high, the thickness of it is uh, merely 1.05 millimeters. And it's, in its cross section, you can see that it is uh, composed of three wafers. There is the middle uh, SOG wafer, which carries the movable mirror suspended by, electro, uh, by silicon springs, which are DRE etched in the silicon layer of the wafer. And then there is this bot the bottom wafer, which carries the stationary mirror of the filter. And the electrostatic actuation is, is done uh, using electrodes, which are deposited on the cap wafer and connected to exterior pads using glass through vias. So 
in this specific design, the optical gap tunable range is between 100 and 600 nanometers, giving an uh, unprecedented uh, increase ratio of six in the optical gap size. Now, uh, since gap uniformity is of paramount importance for hyperspectral imaging, we put a lot of effort into balancing the residual stress of the, uh, anti of the optical coatings by using uh, anti-reflective coatings deposited on the opposing sides of the mirrors. So this, de this uh, device was, was designed bottom-up to be uh, cell phone compatible and cell phone embeddable. It is wafer level sealed and we face challenges into assuring that it can operate over a broad temperature and pressure range and that it is robust and reliable enough to withstand a drop and shock tests. Uh, and we actually were uh, very conservative and designed it to withstand the 20,000 G, which is uh, actually a military standard, which goes beyond the standard required for mobile phones. The specific device was designed with the uh, initial uh, coatings design, uh, shown here on the left. So this figure shows the transmission spectra of the device for various activation voltages. We also compared the results to a model that we developed on the, based on the net radiation approach of Santenberg. And we can see that there is a sufficiently good fit between the results, uh, and then we can conveniently apply this model into designing other coating designs and better coating designs uh, shown here on the right. Uh, so this design is for a broader tunable range of 400 nanometers versus the 200 nanometers on the, on the, on the left. <coughs> As a simple application to, wa uh, to what this can do, we basically uh, place the tunable filter in front of an RGB IR commercial image sensor. And we took uh, spectral images of uh, wine, coke, and water. And if you observe closely the image of the, of the filter here on the left, you can see that it is changing colors. And that's because it is sweeping through different states of the filter. As the result of this is given in the video on the right. So basically, if you can see from this video that wine and coke become transparent for different states of the filter. If we take, uh, for example, the IR channel of this, uh, of this image and we pick three points uh, on these glasses, then we can see on the, on the left the intensity response at these locations. And we can, from this response, you can evidently see that water Coke and wine have different spectral response, and you can use that to tell which liquid is which, which one is water, which one is wine, and which one is coke. So this is a very like simple application, but uh, there are a, a, a vast amount of other applications to this device, like such as the, in the food industry, in the autonomous vehicles, machine sensing, machine vision, uh, health sector, etc. So, in summary, uh, we developed a, a new concept uh, of a tunable fabric filter with a very broad tunable range, and it can support a variety of optical coatings for various applications. It was designed bottom-up to be cell phone compatible, and it meets all the rec reliability requirements of uh, mobile phone makers. It is small enough, so it can easily be embedded in cell phones. So we faced a lot of engineering challenges in developing this device. Um, it is mass producible, doesn't require any sealing, additional sealing. We do believe that this device will disrupt the mobile phone uh, industry and will find its way into your mobile phones just as accelerometers and gyros did a few years ago. Um, and in summary, I, I would li like also to uh, uh, thank our investors and partners at Bosch, Samsung, uh, and our crowd and Jerusalem Venture Partners. Unispectral is a startup that emerged from Tel Aviv University. And that's it, so thank you for your uh, attention.